He's he's one of my favorite guests. And I think you see why. He's one of my favorite guests, and I think you see why. Marky Bilson, Tri-City Sports Now, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio. Next hour, we're going to talk to Jerry Bonkowski. NASCAR moves to Pocono this weekend. Just one race. Next year, it'll be two, back-to-back. That'll be fun. That's going to be... But Pocono is a... Tri I wonder, what's a tougher track? Pocono? Or 600 miles on Charlotte? Think about that. I mean, Pocono's been known for not being the safest place in the world. I do remember J.D. McDuffie beginning uh, decapitated there in 1990. Jake Hubbard, he of the UH basketball team, University High, going to play football in college. Regular Sam Clancy, how did this come about? Please tell me you got the reference to Sam Clancy. Please tell me you got that. I no. And then, Josh Brown, knock on the nation at 1.30. We'll be talking to Braves. We'll be talking about baseball. Braves, disappointing that they lost those two games to Washington. Three and a half out, only four above. They play the Tigers Saturday. We could have Johnson City pitching against Johnson City. Daniel Norris for the Tigers. And although I would doubt that he would still be in the game, it's possible, though. Uh, if and when a Jerry Blevins was brought in for the Braves, that could happen, folks. I might even bet on it that both those pitchers appear on Saturday's game. Yeah. I might, the, the only thing is that Braves got Mike Soroka on there, and you got to figure that Soroka's good for seven strong innings. So that's Saturday's game. Okay, Fulton Avich goes tonight, so Fulton does. Hey, we're talking college basketball to begin with, uh, or not to begin with, but earlier with uh, Adam Nelson, OopDirt.com, because of just how the, the, the stars becoming the high, the uh, head coaches of their college basketball teams. We had Juwan Howard, like I said, Penny Hardaway, Chris Mullen, Patrick Ewing, and there are probably a few others that I haven't thought of. He mentioned Jerry Stackhouse, Vanderbilt, not his alma mater. I was trying to sort of, you know, maybe not so much there. But uh, that, I thought, was something, you know, I really did think that that's uh, becoming a trend, and I think it's a positive trend, and yeah, I do think Penny might be the exception to the rule, because usually I'm like, hey, look, Bobby Knight, you do well, you get hired after you're, you're a, you, you go to the Final Four as a player with Ohio State. A high school coach, you know, you're not obviously going to play in the NBA, and what do you do? First job out of college basketball coach at a Cleveland high school. That, I'm, I'm the principal that I went, you know, to high, wait, you just come off the final four at, at Ohio State? Yeah, Bobby Knight, come out here. And then Bobby Knight joined the Army after his first year. That, that led him, wait a minute, you played at Ohio State, you were in the final four, I think you won a national championship. I Double check that, double check that. Anyway, but uh, Bobby Knight had a successful college career. I think it was like a sixth man on the Buckeyes. And then he went to, he said, join the Army after one year of coaching high school ball. He was a head coach there. But that, yeah, you know, I'd hire, <laughs> I'd hire a guy just off the Final Four, a player, uh, you know, senior, to be my head coach at the, co at the high school team, wouldn't you? But he went the right way, learned, you know, coached uh, some assistant coaching, at West Point, became West Point's head coach, led the nation in rebounding with a team that didn't have any players by rule of more than six foot six. That guy knows how to teach the fundamentals, goes to Indiana, the rest is history. There's always something to talk about with college basketball. Like, I haven't gotten to this in a while, but it's worth mentioning Kerry Blakeshear will not go to the NBA draft. Where, how late are you on this? Okay, a couple of days. I just haven't had a chance to talk about it here yet. We had Ron Neckai on for an hour yesterday. You think I'm cutting Ron Neckai short? Come on. By the way, that I haven't slugged it yet, but that is archived on our 1420 WEMB Sports Radio website. So right there. But anyway, Blake, he wasn't going to get drafted. So he says, okay, Kerry Blake's your junior, 6'10", talented, Post player, 250 pounds, averaged 15 points a game for the Hokies, who went to the Sweet 16 last year. And although he hasn't ruled out playing overseas for some coin, 
maybe, just maybe, he'll go back to college basketball. Will it be Virginia Tech? Because he's still got eligibility. Well, he could be a grad transfer, you see. And so that's in the mix, but so therefore is Texas A&M, where Buzz Williams went to, his old coach. Florida, who the writers down there, oh, they want Blake sheer bad. North Carolina, couldn't beat that, unless it's Kentucky. He had been talked about at Tennessee. However, the problem here is and this is what the uh, Virginia Tech 24-7 website says, where a writer, and forgive me if I mispronounce this man's name, but Madage Sis, Mr. Sis, S-I-S, okay, so we're going to use him, Sis, writes that, no, Tennessee isn't on the list here. And they need Blackshear in the paint if they are to contend again for some of the success that Tennessee has enjoyed the last two years. Oh, the perimeter players will be fine. It's just going, you know, muscle in the paint. No. This being said, a lot of news for the Hokies. Uh, not so good news here as one of their cornerbacks, Brian Doan has entered, excuse me, not that is, Brian Doan is the uh, national analyst for 24-7. Bryce Watts is the cornerback, and he has entered the NCAA transfer portal. He was projected to start for the Hokies this year, but instead it looks like he will be uh, transferring. Now, maybe that's not the end of the world, because the Hokies gave up a lot of yards through the air last year. In fact, it was the most yardage they ever allowed under Bud Foster. But... He once committed to Rutgers, he's from New Jersey, committed to Virginia Tech a few years ago, started in 12 games last year, had a pick, but you know what? That doesn't sound real good for the Hokies. I mean, yeah, might be able to overcome this. I mean, Darren Kirkland Jr., I think he can over, you know, they said, well, he wasn't the player he was when he came to Tennessee as a linebacker, so his retirement isn't that big of a deal. I get it, but the thing is, for Tennessee to really rebound, to have that 8-4 and four that the fans want, they really needed Kirkland to have a big year and go back to that 2016-2015 status. And he's not. That's the thing. So, this doesn't help out the Hokies' depth. And maybe that's why, right after this, I'm seeing writers for Virginia Tech not talk about the Hokies next year, but say, well, let's look at two or three years off and who the quarterback could be and all of that. You know, a lot happens after you finish 6-6 six and six last year. A lot happens, yeah. Down year for the Hokies might continue this next year. That's why they're talking about not this year, but 2020 and 2021 on their 24-7 website. Sports Radio Irwin.